Hey Sugar Snaps, welcome into the studio. If you're new here, my name's Brittany. Welcome to the Textile Indie YouTube channel. I am going to pause my knit project series and interject a basket weaving series right here as I scramble to knit up my shawl so that I can show you that process. Uh, so this is going to be a scrappy basket series and what that means is that we're going to use up bits and pieces of reed in the studio and create a basket and Phoebe is here to say hello. Say hello to the people. Hello. So we're gonna use up bits and pieces of reed for this basket, but this will be a four part series. This video is going to cover how to make the base of your basket using a plain weave spoked base technique. I will go over weaving the walls in twill weave next week and then cut and tuck to finish off the top of the basket, finishing off finally with a basic twined rim. So be sure to check back for those videos and check the description below because all the goodies are there. For now, let's dive in to cutting stakes and getting set up for this base. Have fun. To get started with our basket project, you're going to cut out 12 stakes from 5 8 inch wide flat reed and then mark the center with a pencil. So this length is 30 inches. So 12 stakes that are 30 inches long, mark the center so at 15 inches, you'll put a little mark like this guy to mark that center point. And then you're ready to dunk these in your water to get them damp. So go ahead and set that up, get ready, get your workspace set up, and then let's start weaving this basket. For all of the tools and materials that we will be using in this basket project, check the description below. I put everything in a blog post, the videos in this series, as well as the tools and materials and lengths and all the information you need to be able to follow along and make this project. You can source all of the materials in my shop, Textile Indie Shop. I have all of the basket reed that we'll be using today. Spoiler, in upcoming videos, I'll be using dyed reed to weave the walls of this basket. Um, if you want to dye your own reed, I do have a video on dyeing reed in that blog post as well. So check the description out for all of that information. And without further ado, let's lay out this base. So first grab six of these stakes. That's six, I can count. Oh, and I forgot my spoke weight. I'm getting a spoke weight, which is a heavy metal bar this guy right here I do sell this in my shop you can also use a piece of wood or some something heavy sometimes if I'm desperate I'll use a hammer because it's a little bit heavier I'm using this just to get my stakes in place and actually for this basket because we're doing a round basket they're actually called spokes if you're doing a grid basket they're called stakes. Okay, <laughs> all of that said, those center marks are gonna meet up in the center. So I'm laying these down, center marks meeting here in the center, just this first set of stick of six spokes, laying them out. And then once I have them all laid out, I will adjust the evenness. So I'm putting these down. And then I'll put the spoke weight on top, to hold them down, and make adjustments to make sure that these are all even. So coil up several lengths of quarter inch wide flat oval, dunk it in your water bin, tap it off, on your work surface, and then grab one of the softer pieces. You can feel them, a softer piece will work well to get the base started. We're going to do a plain weave pattern with this to build this base. This is going to be a continuous weave basket, which means that we're going to build the base in a coil going around and around the basket with a continuous piece of reed and then we'll do the same to build the walls and then finish this off with a lashed rim. So because this is a series, today's video is going to be covering getting the base set up. We'll take a pause once that's done and in the next week or two I'll post the next video in the series and you'll be able to start weaving the walls and then the final episode will be 
doing the rim. I'm going to weave with the rounded side of the flat oval facing down so that it ends up being to the outside of the basket. I'm going to move this spoke weight to the closest to me side so that I can work on this side because I find that's easier to do. With the rounded side facing down, I'm gonna clamp this to the inside or on top of one of these spokes. And then I'm going to weave under the following spoke like so and rotate around the basket, tucking it in close to the center, but not too tight because I still need it to be able to move. And because this is so thick, we're going to be playing with how, uh, with the curve to get this to lay somewhat flat. If it curves up a little bit, that's okay. So curving this around. And I'm just weaving under, over, under, over. This guy is not going to get caught in this first turn around. So we'll have to weave it in on the second. I'm going to take out my clamp and weave over top going under this one and under this next one. Because I'm doing continuous weave, I need to do a stair step. When you have an even number of spokes like we do, in order to continue around, you have to go over two at certain points or in this case, under two, so that it's over on the outside in order to get back on plain weave pattern, every other or under over pattern. So now with that first row in place, I will remove the spoke weight and weave, packing this nice and close to that first row or as close as I can get it. And that first row is standing upright. I'm gonna let that do so. I can make adjustments later, but for now, I'll just leave it. Okay, so here was my over two or under two. At this point, I'm gonna go over one here and then over two towards the right. So I went under these two here and then back on pattern. So weaving around, this is looking kind of loosey-goosey. This is an alternate base style from a twined base or a grid basket where it is square or rectangle or a cat's head basket. So again, I'm back to the over two, under two pattern. So I'm gonna go under these two so that I'm over on the outside. And you can see over two here, over two here, over two here so that as I go around the basket, I'm spiraling around. Clamp this to the inside of the basket so you can see your end. And then we'll press these rows down, try to get them to lay flat, as flat as we can. They won't lay entirely flat because of the nature of the flat oval reed. So splice in a new length of weaver when you've run out. And to do that, my weavers just fell on the ground. To do that, we're going to back up and weave over top. I'm gonna to trim this end down so that it is sitting on top of a spoke and then cover that up and weave backwards so that I can tuck this new starting end under the fourth stake over. So I'm gonna tuck it behind this row here, clamp that in place and then tuck this on top like that so that the end is hidden behind this spoke and hidden, hiding the other end of the weaver here. Okay, and then weave around. And I'm doing that over two, or in this case, under two, every row. And this end is where I did the splicing or the overlap. So I'm gonna make sure that gets tucked in. Spiral around. Again, here I am. I need to go under these two to get that stair step pattern. Make sure this lays flat. 
and we'll do an adjustment to the outside here in a second. So keep going around, around, around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now flip it over to the outside. We can press on these rows. And from the outside, this is looking fairly good. It's not lying perfectly flat, but that's okay for the structure of this basket. I'm gonna adjust my center so that's more of a circle. <clears throat> and now let's test the new spokes and see if we have room in between these spokes here. So again, center mark facing up. And it looks like I do have enough space to get the weaver in between these spokes here. So I'm going to set these in, rotating around the basket, lining up the center mark of these spokes with the center mark of the previous spokes. And you end up with quite a pile here in the center. So it's fairly thick right here. those are spaced out and again if you want to you can use your spoke weight to hold things in place for you and then get back to weaving incorporating these new spokes so I'm going to pull my weaver to the top and start weaving these new spokes in place coming up here trying to get onto a pattern where you can weave over top of the new spokes so that they get held in place. And you're gonna press that row right up against previous rows, like so. Over to here, under two. Okay, I'm going to go under these two here and back on top. And now I'm going to do one more row incorporating these new spokes into my base. So pack your row nice and tight. If you need to work out some of the ease, pull on your weaver. And I'll cut this on top here because I just ran out. So to splice again, grab a new length, make sure it's damp and then back it up. So, whoa, came all undone here. Weave this back in place. So I'm gonna cover up this end with my new length, layer it on top so that the end gets covered up and then tuck it behind and on top of that layer right here on that spoke. Now rotate around and weave over top like so. Clamp this in place. Pull tight.
Okay, once you have that second row in incorporating the last set of spokes, press down on your weavers, pack things tight. You want the rows nice and tight together, like so. You can use your straight tip packer for this. Come in and press your rows close together if you don't want to use your fingers. And then if you want to check the bottom, you can flip it over again and press out any looseness. Come in and make sure that bottom row or center bottom row, this first row you did, is nice and flat or circular. Make adjustments. It's okay if they're on their side a bit because as we weave the walls of the basket, we're going to curve up and that will either gently lay flat up against the reed or sit up straight like it is and it will just give it a little bit of a prop to sit on. Come in and make sure your rows are tight and we'll continue to adjust this tightness packing situation as we weave because as it shrinks or as it dries it shrinks and we'll keep an eye on that throughout the process. So that is how to set up a base with plain weave. This is different than um, the twined base that I teach often or a grid base that I've taught here on YouTube before. So it's a little different style. Again, check the description for the list of tools and materials for this basket and other resources in this series. As these videos come out, I'll be putting them into that blog post. So if you're watching this, beyond summer of 2023. They'll be all listed there and packaged nicely ready for you. <laughs> Thanks for joining me in the studio today to weave the base of this basket. Be sure to come back next week for starting the walls. We'll be playing with some color and I'll have a link to dyeing your own read in the description of that video as well as in the blog post. So all the information is really accessible to you and ready to go. Thanks again. Hope to see you in my next video. Bye.